Welcome to the Living Word. A ministry of Bethel Baptist Church located in the Greenfield Indian. The message today is brought to you by our pastor, Dr. Randall Parker. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed the service that's already in progress. First Corinthians in chapter 16. This is Paul's concluding words to the Corinthian church in this, which is actually his second letter. We don't have his first letter. But in 1 Corinthians, he refers to a previous writing. Now, in 1 Corinthians 16, we find a verse that I'm going to use today, and I really feel like it's just the perfect springboard verse to preach the last message of this year in anticipation of the new year, anticipation of 2015. Does that sound strange to you when you say it? 2015, that just, you know, it takes to get used to. About July, I'll get used to it and quit writing 2014. I still sometimes, when I'm dating something, I'll say 19. No, it's not 19, it's 2000. Hard to believe we are where we are. Look, if you would, please, at verse 9. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. A great door, an exciting door has been opened unto me, but there are many adversaries. This year, I believe that we could say that this verse is introducing us to the possibilities of this coming year. I believe there is an excited opportunity. I believe there is great privilege before us. And I believe that 2015 can be a great open door with great and wonderful opportunities. And I'm going to preach tonight on the opportunities of 2015. But then after he says there is an effectual door, exciting door opened unto me, but he says I also realize there are many adversaries. I want to preach this morning on the adversaries of 2015. The door can bring us to wonderful opportunities, or the adversaries can bring us to terrible failures. Much of what we prepare for will bring about what we experience. If you're excited about the open door, God's got wonderful opportunities before you. But if you are ignorant of the adversaries, the enemies, those that would damage the opportunity, you'll accomplish very little this coming year. Now, I want to preach to you this morning. Every person in this room, you got this year coming up. I don't care if you're young or old or whatever. you got a new year. 52 weeks from now, we'll be talking about the year past. Now we're talking about the year future. It's a blank check. It's open. Nothing has uh, transpired yet. Nothing's taken place. Do you realize you've not had one bad day of 2015 yet? Hadn't had a bad day. Let's let's just ask God this morning. Would you think with me, God, I, I want this to be a good year. 
God, I, I, I want this to be a, a blessed year. I want it to be a successful year. And God, I want to go into this year expecting good and great things to come from you. But God, I also want to understand the adversaries are real. And God, as I deal with the adversaries, it will, it will affect how the opportunities are experienced. My first thought is this. We're going to be dealing with the adversary of conformity. Conformity. Listen to me. This year will be the most pressure-packed year of your life to conform to the world. You will never experience a year in your life that the pressure is going to be greater for you to conform to what the flesh wants, what the devil wants, what society wants. It's going to come from government. Amen. It's going to come from society. It's going to come from friends. It's going to come from family. And and one of the great adversaries to what God wants to do in your life is that pressure to conform to the world. Lose your uniqueness. Lose your testimony. Lower your colors. Quit being a stick in the mud. Quit trying to go uphill against the flow. Just get in line with everybody else and be a normal person. Listen to what the Bible says in Romans 12 too. And be not conformed to this world. You see, the world wants you to be just like them. The world wants to take away your your spiritual identity and take away your Christian testimony. And, And you've never experienced it in all your life like you will this year. Amen. Do you listen to the news also of what's going on in the world and how your Christian faith is being attacked and trying to be stifled and smothered. They don't want you to to have any uh, 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 praise on your lips. They don't. We're still under the issue of saying Merry Christmas or not. Amen. I think we ought to say it all blessed year. Amen. And tell people, get used to it. Amen. Get used to it. People come up with the happy holidays, and that wasn't any problem until it became a replacement for Merry Christmas. Amen. Can I tell you this? Your young people in school will face more peer pressure this year than they've ever faced in their life. You wait. One of these days, there's going to be a movement to make it illegal for you to pray in public. Because your prayer in public might be offensive to someone. They may not uh, uh, appreciate you uh, uh, recognizing a divine authority. And the uh, organization of atheists are going to try. You don't have the right to cram your prayer down my throat. Mm, Don't that disdain me. Who said we're cramming anything down anybody's throat? If you're an idiot and you don't have sense enough to know there's a God in heaven, that's your problem. Amen. Amen. Don't come and tell me that that I've got to to, uh, get in line with your atheistic philosophies and, 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 and walk on eggs lest I offend somebody that don't believe in my God. Oh, can I tell you something? In a hundred years from today, everybody will believe in my God. But your adversary is going to be conform. Quit, uh, quit being different. Quit, quit making demands and, and just kind of go with the flow. Have you ever had a, a, a kid look at you and say, Mama, why can't, why can't we just be like everybody else? Why do we have to dress differently? Why do we have to go to church why do we have to, why can't we just, all of my friends look at me like I'm some kind of freak. Good. Amen. When a freak 
thinks you're a freak, that's a good thing. <laughs> Amen. I'm just saying, folks, the, we're going to have to decide, am I just going to roll over? Am I just going to play dead? Am I just going to uh, 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 allow myself to be stripped of my identity and of my Christian heritage and of my Christian faith? He says, hey, listen, don't con be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed Amen. by the renewing of your mind that you might accomplish what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God and go through that open door that I've set before you. You mark my words. You're going to experience it. You're going to, you're going to uh, uh, see it come about. More and more pressure from legalism and all the things. And, and, and are you listening to me? And what's going to make it equally difficult? Most Christians are going to roll over. Most churches are going to roll over. And people are going to say, hey, listen, why don't you be like everybody else and take that steeple down? Ain't going to happen. Amen. Amen. Why don't you be like everybody else and just uh, have one service a week? Not going to happen. Amen. We don't have to conform. The open door says don't conform. But the adversary says just go with the flow. Families are going to say, why do you, we're not praying at the family reunion this year. We say, oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> Amen. You, you, don't have to, you don't have to listen to, to naysayers. You don't have to listen to uh, 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 hypocrites that, that, that'll tell you, well, I go to church just like you do. No, you don't either. Amen. Be not conformed to the world. The second adversary, the second adversary, is the adversary of comfort. Well, preacher, I just, I, you know, I'm getting older. Is there anybody in here that's not getting older? Amen. Uh, Judah is getting older. Do you know what? He's seven times older than he was this time last, last week. We're all getting older. Well, preacher, I just don't feel like fighting it anymore. I just want the comfort of non-confrontation. You know what you're saying? You're just getting too stinking lazy to do what God wants you to do. Amen. The comfort zone. Let's just make it comfortable and not rock the boat and not get the children upset. Don't get the kids in trouble at school. Make sure that this, I, 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 just, I, just, want, I just want to to rock on down the river. The Bible says, And whosoever, Luke 14, 27, doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Christianity has never been a faith of comfort. Christianity is a faith of sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Get that through your head. Christianity is not something that you're going to be uh, uh, blessed with comfort and ease. Christianity is going to be something that demands from you. Amen. Are you willing to pick up your cross, be identified with Jesus Christ, and follow him? He says if you're unwilling for that, and all you can think about is the comfort and, and, and without controversy, and let's just, let's just let sleeping dogs lie. Can I tell you? This year is going to suck a lot out of you because the demands are going to be coming. Can I just go ahead and make the rest of you mad that's not mad already? <laughs> about 5 o'clock this afternoon, about 5 o'clock this afternoon, you're going to be tested whether you'd rather obey God or be comfortable. Thank you, preacher. Amen. And listen to me. It would be a wonderful time this afternoon to make a determination. This year is not going to be about comfort. This year's going to be about the cross. 
This year, I'm going to get serious with God, and, and if it causes issues with the family, so be it. If it causes issues with the government, so be it. it whatever it costs, I'm going to identify with Jesus. And I'd rather bear his cross than to be comfortable. As I said a while ago, it's easy to get to that place. Let somebody else do it. Let somebody else take care of that. Can I tell you? That's an adversary you're going to have to fight. Let's go on. Aren't you glad we're going on? It don't get any easier. The third adversary is the adversary of compromise. Boy, this year, this year, you're going to be approached from every direction in the world to compromise. Listen to what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Now, I, I, I want to read this verse. And in all probability, you've not heard this verse in a long time. Listen to this. Brother Tim, we used to preach this. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Come ye out from among them, and be ye separate. We used to stand up and preach that. We used to teach our children that. But now it's easier to compromise, and just instead of coming out from among them, let's just join in with them. Amen. If you don't have that spirit of separation, that spirit of trying to, trying to be different and uh, peculiar for God, you're going to start compromising. This year will be easier than it's ever been in your life to start drawing in the parameters. Little at a time. Well, preacher, we're living in a different age. Tell me about it. But we're serving the same God. I'm carrying the same Bible, and I'm going to have to face the same Jesus in judgment. Compromise. Well, preacher, I don't uh, feel like I've really compromised. I'm, I'm no closer to the world than I've ever been, but are you as close to God as you've ever been? Amen. Amen. This year will be your opportunity to lower the flag and say, well, those things are not really that important. If they were important last year, they're going to be important next year. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something, dads. Don't compromise on your leadership and your family. Amen. Amen. You are the priest of the home. You are the head of the home. Don't compromise that. Stand up and be what God wants you to be. Amen. Get some backbone. Amen. Walmart's got several sizes. And stand up and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. We're not going to compromise. Uh, preacher, how could I? Give me, give me a way I can tell if I've compromised. I'm going to give you a way. If, if you've got, you got an older family. Now, uh, from Cindy to Ellen's, how many years? No, no, not that many. <laughs> Nine, eight years, okay? Now, that's a pretty, pretty good little span there. Can I tell you this? Now, Cindy's not here, but Ellen is. The same rules we had for Cindy, eight years later, we had for Ellen. Amen. We didn't change because we got older and it got more comfortable and it was easy to compromise. Let me ask you this. If you want to find out if you've compromised, ask your oldest child if you, if, if you let them behave like you let your youngest child behave. 
Amen. Well, preacher, when 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 this when she was in high school, we made her walk line. But when this one's in high school, what happened to your convictions? Amen. What happened to your convictions? That older child, you made walk the line, and now the younger child, you let them live like the, something off the street, and, and you say, oh, I've not compromised. This year's going to make it even worse. Some of you young children are saying, I wish he'd shut up. He's killing me. <laughs> I got it made. All I hear is about uh, from my older brother. Boy, when I was your age, we didn't get to do that. Well, now mom and dad's compromised. Amen. It's an ugly word. Compromise is an ugly word, but that is an adversary you're going to face this year. Well, maybe that dress is okay now. No, I didn't let your big brother grow his hair like that, but I guess I'll let you. Man, this ought to be on television. <laughs> no, I, I, I used to. We never watched TV shows like that, but now you know. What is it? It's compromise. And where it brought you this far last year, man, if you don't get some integrity and character, God help us where it's going to take us this year. The filth that is on television is absolutely unprecedented. You don't have to watch the programs, just the announcements for the programs. The adversary of complacency. Listen to what Proverbs 6.10 says. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Preacher, I'm just tired of fight. I'm just going to get complacent. If they want to tell me that homosexual behavior is okay, I don't care. If they want to tell me abortion has been accepted, I don't care. That I, I don't care. And we get into that mode of complacency. You know what? It wouldn't hurt all of us to get a little bit of indignation inside. Amen. Hatred for sin. Not for sinners. Don't you go off and say we ought to hate sinners. No. We love sinners, but we ought to hate the sin that's destroying them. Amen. We, well, we ought to get our dignity back to where stuff that comes on television embarrasses us. Amen. We sat there and listened to commercials that years ago, somebody would have took a shotgun and blown that TV up. How dare that take place? Several years ago, I heard a story about a man who came come home from work. <coughs> Television was broke. And boy, everybody was hollering, get the TV fixed, get the TV fixed. You don't holler that now because there's nine other TVs in the house. Get the TV fixed, get the TV. So a, a week went by, and fine boy, they started screaming, we want to get, get the TV fixed. He said, I, I'll take it in. He come home from work that night, and he said, honey, there's a couple over at the church. I'm sorry. There's a couple where I work. Their house has been damaged, and they need a place to stay for a week or two. Would it be okay if I brought them over here? And she said, well, sure. We can make room. Well, now, before you decide that, you need to understand, both of them are heavy drinkers. And if they come in here, they're going to they're going to drink. And I've been around them, and they they're pretty careless about their affections, and they're probably going to sit here on the couch. And Lord, it's untelling. And she said, "What?" And their language is 
Now, I've heard them talk, and it's just garbage. She said, why would you, why would you bring somebody in this home like that that's going to affect our children, going to, going to expose them? to? We, why would you do that? He said, I'm not. That's why I hadn't brought the television back. If you wouldn't have it done on your couch, don't have it done on the tube. Amen. Do you remember when we used to get up and say, we don't watch that here? Amen. We don't listen to that here. But now, compromise. The last one is the adversary of coldness. Mark 6.36. The multitude's hungry. They've been with the Lord three days with nothing to eat. No doubt there's murmuring and complaining and, and the disciples are being called on the carpet. When are you going to do something about this? We're hungry. When are you going to? And so the disciples go to the Lord and say, send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread. Just send them away. We're living in a world today that you go sit in the mall, you go to a public restaurant, you, do, you go where public people gather, and you just listen. It's easy to get the attitude of just let them all go to the devil. To get hard hearted. Preacher, this world we're living in is a cesspool. And whatever happened to them, happens to them, is exactly what they deserve. Well, what would you and I have received if we got what we deserved? But it's going to be easy this year to get cold-hearted, hard-hearted.